let's uh, <clears throat> go to First Corinthians 10 again. But let's start reading from verse 6 instead of verse 1. To pick up from what we have been learning from this morning. Now these things took place as examples for us so that we will not desire evil things as they did. Don't become idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and go up to party. Let us not <coughs> commit sexual immorality as some of them did. <clears throat> In a single day, 20,000 people died. Let us not test Christ as some of them did and were destroyed by snakes. And, then com and don't complain as some of them did and were killed by the destroyer. These things happened to them as examples and they were written for our instruction on whom the ends of the ages have come. So whoever thinks he stands must be careful not to fall. No temptation has come upon you except what is common to humanity. But God is faithful. Say God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way out so that you may be able to bear it. We ended uh, this morning talking about uh, uh, what happened to Israel. They went to the same cloud, the same baptism, ate the same manna, witnessed the same ten plagues, <clears throat> crossed under the same Red Sea. But at the end, not all of them made it to the promised land. Okay, so we, we, we were making an illusion to the same thing that is happening to us. Could be listening to the same teaching. Could be uh, going to the same family camp. You know, and all of those things. But at the end, it's the application of faith teachings that we receive. Not everybody receives the same thing. So the warning was, don't, became, don't become idolaters like they were. Don't become drunkards and gluttons. Do not test Christ. Do not be a complainer. <clears throat> they, were, they were killed by a destroyer. This was during the times of Korah, Korah's rebellion. And all of those things are for our examples. And we should make sure from verse 12 that we are standing and not falling. Verse 12, okay. And we were told, we're given the word, be careful. You should pay Paul. The word careful here is make sure that you can see. Because sometimes when we uh, uh, hold somebody accountable and when we ask them about their faith life, the most standard answer is we're doing well. Make sure that you're really seeing it properly. You know? and, and I think among, among Filipinos is one of the things that we have to be very careful about because when we ask somebody, how are you doing? Our normal answer is we're okay. Are we really okay? Can you really see where your life is going? Can you really see the directions that you're, that you're taking? Or do we need to make some modification, some uh, adjustments? All the temptation that the Exodus generation were tempted with and all the temptation that we are being tempted in, Paul said this, they are all common. We will not be tempted beyond what is normal or common to humanity. Meaning, you are not the only one being tempted in areas of temptation that you are under. We, what, what we need to do is when we are being tempted to take the way out. Any temptation, no matter how, how difficult, how, how easy it could there's always a way out. Yeah. The wrong way is when we don't take the way out. Like, like, for example, when uh, Caleb and Joshua were tempted to, do, to give bad report, the way out is give the good report. When the ten spies were being tempted to give the, ba the bad report, the way out is to, to give the good report. It, it could be taken. It could be taken. Any temptation that we are going through right now, there is a clear way out. If you say, well, there is no clear way out. You're Mahinga the liar. There is every temptation. There's a clear way out. We are not 
taking those way out. Sometimes we choose to complain, we choose to lie, we choose to do other things. Okay, so the struggles that we are going through is the same struggle that all faith communities go through. You know, I, I gave Joseph as an example because he's not here anymore and he finished college. But uh, I, I told you when, when uh, Joseph was struggling in school, the temptation is, shall I hide it from my parents? Because I'm telling a lot of students hide it from their parents. A lot of the students here hide it from their parents. They're struggling. So the temptation was, shall I hide it from my parents? Well, Joseph decided, I'm going to take the way out. The way out is, I'll tell my parents. Because now in parenting, if you are a good parent, your, your child is telling you, I'm having difficulty with my classes. Are you going to kill him? Of course not. You're going to ask him, why are you struggling? Now, you, Joseph was a big boy. He was not losing weight during that time. And, and he said, you know, when, when a big boy comes to you in tears saying, I'm going to change schools. Now, as a parent, you can be, you can, and I, I, I'm strict. But when, you're, you're, when your son humbles himself like that and said, I need help. What are you going to do? He took the righteous way. He could have, and, and, and guys, you know, we, we're, we're a family here. Some of the students here took the lying way. When clearly, all you need to do is to be honest. That's the right way. And so now when my, when my son confessed and said, I'm having difficulty, what do you think happened to my heart? It went out to him. Because now you're seeing your son struggle. That is the way out. You know, when, when we are being tempted and we're going back to the mercy and uh, the faithfulness of God, when we come to God and say, Lord, I need help. This temptation is too great. This, I, I don't know the way out. I, I, want, I want the way out. And, and God will show you the way out. And, and the way out could be painful. It could be to be honest. It could be uh, to do the right thing, which sometimes is painful. But boy, that's the way out. The way out for the Israelites is when Moses said, get in. Moses did not send the 12 spies to decide whether they will go in or not. Just to, to see that the report is true. Now these 10 spies decided we will be smart. We will be smart. Can you imagine what, what, what they were thinking? We're going to tell the people, look, the walls are up to the heavens. They were giants. They have big noses, you know. They, they fume fire from their nose. They begin to exaggerate things. That's the wrong way. What should be the way? They should have come to Moses and say, we're scared. We're scared. It was already the Iron Age. So the, the Bronze Age was way past. So it's the Iron Age. They were having wheels, uh, metals on the spokes of their, of their of their wheels, of their chariots, they should have said that we're scared. Had they said we're scared, Moses should have ministered to them. And God could have ministered to them. But they took the wrong way. The right way is, God, this spying job brought me to, my, to who I am. I am really scared. You know how, how some people when, when uh, I was... I was laughing this morning because John caught a big rat, you know. How big? This big. Let's exaggerate this big, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and John loves research. Says, Ever since you were young, you, you love research, right? And then the internet came. He Googles everything. You know, and uh, because he loves research. And, and uh, he, he said, oh, the rats, you know, it's moving. I was, I was uh, watching TV. You know how we do it in the Philippines? We burn those things, yeah? Here is animal abuse. So, uh, I, I don't know what's with me. I enjoy watching them get scared. I, I do. Uh, maybe it's a temptation or a delight, you know, but I told John, get a piece of wood, hit the head. 
<laughs> yeah. But but what, what I'm saying is this: in, 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 instead of, of, of saying I'm going to, he said, "Well, I I uh, I uh, I don't like to do that." You know, the the human, uh, the animal rights in him came out. You know, so. <laughs> I was just watching TV this morning and I was enjoying myself. But I didn't, I, I didn't scream to him all over the place. You know who was, was raising his, her voice all over the place? My wife. Yeah. Because I, I don't think if she ever touched a rat in her life. Maybe the maids do it, you know. But uh, when you become honest like that, then it's a different reaction. Listen, some of us, when we go through difficulties in life, we think, we think we need to impress God. I don't know, <laughs> for lack of better term, I do not know who is that idiot who taught us this, that we need to impress God. We actually are full of fear sometimes and we go to God and say, by stripes I'm healed, Lord I can do it. You, you think you're going to impress God? What, what is it about us that, that make us think we need to impress God? What God wants is we need to be honest with him. We need to be faithful. That's why he said, you sin, you confess your sins. That's honesty. You, know, you come to me with all your burden. Our problem is we always lie. That's why, that's why you know, we who are older, we look, we look at some of these young people, man, the way they, they talk, like, like they're going to beat up somebody. Put a rat in front of them. They jump on the door. On the <laughs> Have you ever seen some of these youngsters talk, I'm going to beat him up. Put, put a little mouse. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the way they, 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 they talk, I'm going to beat him up. <laughs> you, you see, what happened is, instead of saying, uh, I'll be honest with God. We try to impress God. And that translates to how families work together. Instead of being honest, we just keep lying to each other. So therefore, no, no real help comes out. I don't know. I really don't know why. Number one, we are trying to impress God all the time. And I also don't know why we are trying to impress each other all the time. Have you ever, guys, listened to each other talk lately? I don't know why is there a need for the family of God to try to impress each other. Huh? We really go extra mile to sound impressive. The problem is this, when other people around us already know what's going on. And so trying to be impressive makes you look smaller. Instead, instead of coming up and saying, I, can, I can't really do that. You know, in, in my little counselings in the Philippines, how many pastors, and that's why I appreciate them, come to me and say, oh, pastors, I really, I, I really, I, I can't do that. I'm really scared of that. Yeah. And these are pastors. Well, let me just stay here. You know, when somebody comes to you like that, your heart reach out and say, come on, I'll, I'll take your hand. You can, you can do this. In the same way, when, when children go to their parents in all honesty saying, I'm scared of this, I'm scared of that. I'll tell you, in, in, this is an unofficial <laughs> uh, conclusion of my personal observations after living for over five decades, okay? <laughs> yeah, my personal observation. Here is a young man, very scared that he will not get a girlfriend. So instead of coming, going to his parents saying, Mom, Dad, I, I do not know how to catch a girlfriend. Yeah. They keep bragging. 
It's easy. It's easy. Well, you're all having difficulty. Why can't you be honest? Maybe your parents can help. Now, here are some girls having a hard time catching a boyfriend. By the way, you know, I'm, well, you know what I'm telling is true. Instead of being honest, telling the parents, I'm having a hard time catching a boyfriend. They, they keep coming up with all of these cosmetic things. And so the more they don't catch somebody, the more insecure they get. And instead of coming to God, coming to their parents, I feel so insecure. They all just lie. You know how I know? These are my counselings for years. And the parents doesn't even know. You know. Ann and I were, were, were talking to somebody and uh, very strict. Parents. You begin to struggle are we, am I going to be honest as a minister or am I not going to be honest? Finally, I blurted out to the guy because I was already upset. I said, hey, listen, brother, I said, your daughter is not the prettiest person there is around. And the father looked at me and said, what do you mean, Pastor? I said, you're practicing super strictness. I said, what if nobody goes after your daughter? What are you going to do? And the guy looked at me and says, what do you mean, Pastor? Are you putting down my daughter? I said, no, I'm not. I said, you got to be honest. You want your daughter to get married? Don't put that iron hand behind her. I said, look at me. Oh, Pastor, Pastor, why did you say that? These are honest things. I'm telling you the amount of insecurity that, that floats around can be helped if we will be honest. That is the way out. You think God will reject you when you, God, I'm scared. Remember who said that in the Bible? Moses. Right? The guy was scared. He didn't say, oh, I'm, I, I can't wait. I'm going to beat up on Pharaoh. I have the stuff now. No, he said, no, 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 I, no I, I, I cannot talk. That's what happened to us. When we are not facing the guy or the girl that we like, oh, I, I'm going to approach her. I'm going to just... And the moment you approach Are you speaking in tongues? That's what Moses was. Lord, I'm slow of speech. You know what Moses was saying? I'm scared to face a Pharaoh. God, you remember 40 years ago, I ran away because I killed somebody. I don't want to go to jail. That was what Moses was saying. And God says, I'll be with you. You see what God said is, keep saying, you're going to make it, you're going to make it. Because he was honest enough. No temptation that, that we are tempted in is uncommon. And if we will just have the honesty with God, with our spiritual leaders, with our parents especially, I think that can, that can be solved. Yeah. We have a member, one of the reasons I know this is this. I, we have a secretary in our church in the Philippines. She was, the, the dad, my wife likes the dad. She's, he's got a, a baritone voice. Remember that pastor that you like a lot? Yeah, he's got, he's got a baritone voice. Our church is big, <clears throat> thousands of members. He doesn't need a microphone when he talks. He's got a daughter, one of our secretaries. The daughter is fat. Yeah. She's not one of the prettiest secretaries that we have. And she is a fan. And one day, we have one of the janitors. Uh, she's the only daughter. One day, one of our janitors come to like her. The janitor is not very educated. The janitor is not super handsome. He's got looks. Okay. But that's about it. He's got looks. <laughs> Whatever kind of look of that, don't ask. Just, he's got looks. But she is a fan. And so she started, he, he liked the secretary. So he started asking her out for a date. And boy, this pastor of ours was very upset. Not my daughter. Now, they started dating in secret. Not my daughter. With a big Barton voice. Not my daughter. 
One day, he, he, uh, he talked to his daughter and said, Daughter, you're my only daughter. You're not going to date this guy. You know, you're educated. He's not. You're not going to date this guy. You know, I, I like, I really appreciated, because they got married, I really de- appreciated the honesty of his daughter. He's, he looked at his dad and said, Dad, he just laughed at his dad. At her dad, Dad, why are you so strict? You're my only daughter. I love you, daughter. You know that. You know, why are you so strict? Have you ever looked at the mirror lately? He said, what do you mean, daughter? I'm not the prettiest girl there is. Thank God this guy loved me. And, and, and the pastor in our church, look at her daughter and says, what? Dad, look, I'm fat. I'm not the prettiest. And this boy loves me. And you're going to stop him? You want me to stay single for the rest of my life? She was laughing while telling her, her dad like this. This is a true story, you know. The, the, the pastor is already dead, so I can't. I can't talk like this. And the dad says, you're right. So he let go. The two got married. Yeah. They have two kids now. But you see the honesty of the girl? Dad, what, what's, what's up with you, dad? I'm not the prettiest in the church. Yeah. We used to sell a lot of pretty girls in our church. It's a big church, so. So she said, I'm not the prettiest dad. You see the honesty? The dad was dumbfounded. Look at her daughter. Without saying it, of course, I, you can tell what she sa- he said. My daughter is right. Okay. <laughs> and they're married now. Two kids. You see, the, the honesty. The problem is, in, in, in our communication with one another, we become very dishonest. Now, that dishonesty translates our dishonesty to God. I don't know who started this idea that we, we need to impress God. You and I, we cannot impress God. We don't need to impress God. That is translation to us always trying to impress each other. Children always want to impress parents. They are already failing in their classes and they're saying, oh, it's okay, Dad, it's, it, it's okay. It's no longer okay. Why don't you ask for help? Maybe your, your parents will give you some, some, some tutor. But that is the way out there. Every temptation that we are tempted with, there is a way out. Now, it goes a little bit uh, deeper than that now. Okay, next verse. Because it's a choice now. Choose unity with Christ and with his body or choose unity with the enemy. That's the choice that we have now. Verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 10. For, uh, 1 Corinthians 10. Remember we just said no temptation. Is, you, you'll be tempted with unless it's common to man. Now, verse 14, it jumps. So then, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I am speaking as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I am saying. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The, the bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, uh, we who are many are one body. Since all of us share the one bread, consider the people of Israel. Do not, do not uh, those who eat the sacrifices participate in the altar. What I'm saying then, that food sacrificed to idols is anything or that an idol is anything. No, but I do say that what they sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot share in the Lord's table and the table of demons. Or are we provoking the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Goes back to this thought from last week. Everything is permissible, but not everything builds up. No one is to seek his own good, but the good of the other person. Eat everything that is sold in the meat market without raising questions for the sake of conscience. Since the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, in any of the unbelievers invite you, uh, if any of the unbelievers invite you over and you want to go, eat everything that is set before you. So say you go back to the Philippines and there is a fiesta. 
they invite you. Eat everything that is presented. Eat everything that is for you without raising questions for the sake of conscience. Now, when you eat, when you go to a feast like that, you eat, don't ask who's, 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 who's your patron saint. Don't ask that. The moment you ask, you sin. But just eat. But if someone says to you, this is food from a sacrifice, do not eat it out of consideration for the one who told you and for the conscience, for the sake of conscience, I do not mean your own conscience, but the other person's. For why is my freedom judged by other person's conscience? If I partake with thanksgiving, I am criticized because of something of which I give thanks. So, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I also try to please everyone in everything, not seeking my own benefit, but the benefit of many, so that they may be saved. Imitate me as I also imitate Christ. So this is the other pitfall. You go to a feast. You go to a feast, they, they, they uh, gave you all kinds of food. Paul said, eat. Don't ask questions. Don't ask, uh, who is your patron saints? The moment you ask, you sin. Now, if you have a weak conscience, now this is where being judgmental comes into play, because Paul already said that. Say, I go to, say I'm new, newly born again, I go to a town fiesta. I went back to the Philippines town fiesta. I, I saw, I saw Juni eating, you know, eating all the food and I said, man, this feast, sino bang patron saint sa inyo? Hindi mo rin alam. Si Saint Junisius, okay, so, so, they were offering, right? So I saw him eating because he's born again, he's mature, so he doesn't ask questions, he eats. Me as a Christian, I should not ask him. Now this is the inconsideration. Now I am weak. I am eating. I'm not eating, right? What do you do when you're not eating? You don't want anybody else to eat. It's called self-righteousness. He's eating everything. I'm not, I'm not eating. It's not fair. We are both born again. So I approach him and say, why are you eating that? Don't you know it's for the Saint Dionysius? The moment I ask, what should he do? Stop eating. Why? Because me asking questions, I thought, because I'm immature, I thought I was rebuking him. I thought I was making him feel guilty when in fact when I ask him questions, I'm showing him I am weak. You know what that is? Sometimes we just talk too much. We, sometimes we ask unnecessary questions. We just, we just talk too much sometimes. Your brother or your sister is already enjoying food. Let them enjoy the food. Stop asking questions. When you ask questions, it demonstrates how weak your conscience is. And when your conscience is so weak, because he is strong, when I ask the question, now I force him to stop. Now when I force him, I see him enjoying. Man, he was just enjoying left and right. He gave me some more, some more of this. And I mean, he is really enjoying. So what happened? When I stop him, I did not take on, into consideration his own good. I actually was selfish. Can you imagine he is enjoying himself? It's just like putting up a prank against somebody. They're enjoying their food and you know they're enjoying food. Bigla mong nilapitan, malinis ba yan? And you know you're just joking. Right? Malinis ba yan? And it, it bothers the mind of the eater. But you know it's clean. And that shows those little activities shows the immaturity. Now, this is how Paul summarized it. Number one, he said, flee from idolatry. Of all the summative sins, Paul chose idolatry. Why? Remember, I told you the demons of idolatry is the same as the demons of adultery. Then Paul made this interesting equation with our cabinet meal. Now, he was talking about food offered to idols. And then look at the switch. And this is where the context is. Look at the switch. He talks about the Holy Communion. The cabinet meal with Jesus, the Last Supper, and idolatry. We share from the same bread. Remember Israel? They pass through the same cloud, the same Red Sea, witness everything the same. Now as Christians, we share the same blood and the same bread. That's Jesus Christ. Then he told us to consider Israel when they commit the sins above. They are doing it on the altar of God. There was no communion in Exodus. But when they are eating manna and doing all of that, the, the way Paul equates this is the, like taking communion. 
they were actually taking communion. Why? Who is the manna? Jesus this morning. Who is the water from the rock? Jesus. So when they were eating the manna together, what were they eating? What's the equivalent today? Communion. This is my body, this is my blood. That's the equation. So what did they do when they stood up? They ate the manna, they drank the water. What did they do after they get full when they stood up? What did they do? Commit adultery. Remember? They party. They were committing orgies. You are just seated with Christ. You are having communion with Him in the wilderness. You stood up and commit adultery. Who got offended? Jesus. Now we, let's go back to communion. What it means is when we commit idolatry, we are sharing the same table with demons. It, it's, it's like this. Okay. We are, we are eating together. We are partaking of communion, right? Well, the, the biblical communion is we should really be eating together. If you really want to make it biblical, we should first have lunch downstairs on the first Sunday. And in the middle of that, I'll break the bread. That's biblical communion. Serving these little things is convenience. That's not, that's not how it's done in the Bible. Now, the, the thing is this. That's why gluttony is forbidden in that context. Uh, now, now, this is what happened. You are, you are eating. We are sharing bread, right? The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. We are sh sh sharing that. Then we stood up. After we stood up, we put our eye on a girl that we want to have sex with. We just, we just ate on the same table with Jesus, which is equivalent to marriage. And then, what did you do? You commit adultery. Now, think, now, now again, I, I told you everything is a manifestation. Think about this. You're just eating with your wife, having dinner with your wife. You told your wife, I love you, I care for you, and everything else. Right? You have sex with her. You stood up took on a prostitute. What kind of a person are you? That is the equivalent of this. This is the context when Paul said, do not eat unworthily. It is equivalent, you come to church, you clap your hands, you don't want to be embarrassed instead of being honest, the communion is served, you took the communion. And then you stood up from the church, you left and commit sin. Meaning, you have no intention of repenting. You have no intention of changing your life. You partook of the communion. You desecrated the Lord's table. That's the context of you are unworthy. Now what will happen, for example, if the man and the wife are having supper, they have sex, then he stood up and have sex with another. The girl finds out. What did he do? And you're a Filipina. What did you do? Didn't he last me your husband? Pinatay mo yung husband mo. Justified homicide in the Philippines. This is the reaction. And that's the same thing in, in Israel. That's how they react. Because you desecrate the temple. This is what we do with Jesus Christ. Now, when we sit together with our spouses, we have dinner, we have sex. And then you stood up and find another partner. You are not thinking of her good. Kaya nga, kasi ah, nagagalit ako pagka nanonood ng mga Pilipino movies yan. Kasi dyan, nilipat kami sa hulu. Pero palang Pilipino movie doon. Di ba? Eh, kasi mga drama ng Pilipino eh. They are having dinner with their wife. And then in the middle of the night, left and go to another woman. I mean, what, what kind of garbage is that? This is precisely what we do with Christ. We come. We partake of the same spiritual food. Same teaching. We shout the same amen. And then we leave the church. And we live exactly the same way as everybody else. What we are doing is we are offending Jesus. When we do this, we are provoking the Lord to jealousy. Now the Bible says, God is a jealous God. Can you take the jealousy of the Lord? Now let me jump on the book of Proverbs. 
can you take the jealousy of a woman? Proverbs 1 is about that. You cannot make a woman jealous. You cannot. The Lord equated his jealousy with the jealousy of a jealous wife. She will kill you. you see? She will kill you. And then it was equated also with the jealousy of a man. He'll kill you. That's, that's the emotion of, of the Lord. And when we violate the communion, when we sin, when we pretend we are repentant and we keep doing the same thing over and over again, that is idolatry, that is adultery. Then Paul went back to the teaching of beneficial and permissible. Then he added that no one is to seek his own good but the good of other person. Let's see how this works. Because of idolatry, adultery, and complaining of the people, very few, ten spies, they convinced the people, right? They complained, they committed adultery. By the way, those complainers, they, they were adulterers, they were idolaters. Because of their complaint, what happened? The whole community stayed in the wilderness for 40 years. Because of your idolatry, your faith cannot develop. Because of your adultery, you cannot see clearly. You refuse to fight because you are sinful. You are idolatrous. So you said, I cannot take it. I cannot fight. They look like giants. Because you are sinful. Instead of being as and saying, Moses, I don't deserve it. Don't send me as a spy. I'm an adulterer. He should have said that. I'm an idolater. He should have said that. Don't send me. You do not send the wrong leaders. You do not send the wrong spies. They will give a different report. So what happened? The whole community of faith suffered for 40 years in the wilderness. I told you my uncle worked in Saudi Arabia, first mate, vying to be, to be a captain, but got sick, diabetes, and he said, maybe it's time for me to retire. He's, he's big. So he looked at his wife and said, Wife, I've sent you so much money already. I'm, I know our house is paid. You know my plan, I want to buy some taxis so that I can just be an operator. Big grant. I think I can no longer work. I, uh, I will retire. And the wife says, uh, no, 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 you have to go back. We need more money. And he became suspicious. He went to the bank. Zero balance. That's when he discovered that his wife has another man. I mean, he came to my mother uh, because they all go to my parents to cry when, when they discover something like that. And so he discovered further. Now, this is the adultery of the woman. He, dis he, he went further. He looked at the kids. Oh, turn out. The boy is addicted to drugs. The girl is addicted to drugs. You know why? Because they found out their mother is cheating on their dad to silence them she was giving them money because of her adultery he wrecked the life of her husband wrecked the life of her kids now you're gonna tell me you love your kids you did not think of what is good for your kids apply it I, I told you spiritual life can't be separated from physical life let's Let's, let's go back. A lot of those ten spies, they did not think of what is beneficial to Israel. Remember at one time, Miriam and Aaron rebelled against Moses? They, they were delayed also because Miriam has to be outside the camp for a week. They got delayed. Remember the rebellion of Korah? People died. These are selfish people they do not take into consideration what will benefit others. And, and I'm telling you this, this is one thing that we need to start thinking of right now. We need to think of what is good for our families, what is good for our church, what is good for the community of faith. Most people don't think this way. We just think of ourselves. That's why we begin to find people sinning. They, they, they spread some gossip. Guys, I, I, told, I told some people who, who are leaving the church at one time, guys, can you do me a favor? They were leaving. What, what pastor said, okay, we'll do it. 
Uh, can you do me a favor? They said, they said, they said what, what pastor? I said, can you, can you shut your mouth? And they said, what do you mean? I said, guys, you're leaving already. Whatever commitment you made in the church, it's gone. I said, I will be here to pick up the pieces and to make sure that our church keeps running. I said, can you please just, just shut up and, 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 and say nothing? Yes, pastor said, they came down and started talking. Why, what happened? They are not thinking of what is good. That's why some people, they already left the church. They keep emailing you. Some are still trying to convince you to leave. Why? Because they don't care about what is good for the rest. That's what happened. Look, the husband and the wife already divorced. The wife or the husband still, what's, what's happening with the kids? I love my kids. If you love your kids, why in the world did you do this? I've heard couples who already separated or divorced and they still keep bad-mouthing each other. Can you just keep quiet and just move on with your life? The good of the other is the same thing happened in churches. Same thing happened in families. You know. Oh, you're about to get married? Let me talk to you. I have some news for you about whom you're about to marry. Can you just shut up? The guys are about to get married. You, you're going to gossip? No, I, I really need to talk to you. You need to know something. Shut up. That's what we do. Now, you do it in the body of Christ, that becomes a different story. The young generation ended up entering the promised land. Look at this. Because, because of the selfishness of those parents, the young generation, they end up entering the promised land without their parents. They all died. I'm entering the promise now. They all died. So the young generation has never been to war. So now they enter the promised land. They can remember the cowardice of their parents. They enter the promised land. Joshua said, by the way, you read, you read Genesis, the promise of God to Abraham. It's up to the river you pray this. You look at your map at the back of your Bible. You know where the river you pray this is? It's up to the border of Babylon. That's how far the land of Israel should be. Up to the, up to the Euphrates River. But they remember their parents are cowards. So Moses, uh, Joshua said, there's still more land to be conquered. Oh, oh, we're okay here? We did better than our parents already. But God is saying, hey, listen, but I want you to go up the river Euphrates. That's the border. And up to the Sinai Peninsula. That's the border. They did not take it. In fact, part of Saudi Arabia is supposed to be theirs. They did not take it. Why? Because they see it from their parents. Their parents quit. Their parents became selfish. That's the example. What happened? Everybody suffers. So now people say, hey, leave me alone. You know, let me do my own thing. Let, let me ask you this. What if your hand is malikot? Okay? It wants to touch everything. It touches a fire. What happened? It burns. What will you do with your hand? Will you say, booting up? No, the whole body suffers. You find that your right hand burned. You found out that the rest of the body needs the right hand. Can't be used. Why? It burned. Listen, I hope you and I get this. We just keep hurting each other. Because if we are one body, look at this, if we are indeed one body, when one part of the body hurts, the rest hurts. Ah, buti na lang, umalis. No, he hurt the body already or shared the bar, part of the body. Have, have you noticed when people leave us, what happened? What do we feel? Pain. Pain. When people be what do we feel? feel? Pain. Look at husbands and wives when they violate each other. They may still be too. Pain. That's what happened. Think about that. You're not thinking of the good of others. You know. You know, I remember when I was growing up, my, my parents would say, uh, well, Jose, you, you don't, don't, we have no television, but don't watch TV. Because for me to watch TV, I have to leave the house. Okay, do you have to go to Oh, because you're going to wake up in the morning, you have to cook for your kuya. Your kuya has to go to work. 
if you don't sleep early, you will fight with your kuya. How oh, it, it affects. Have you, do, do you have any sour grapes in your family? Let me explain what I mean, okay? Let me make this uh, politically correct, okay? Because they're not thinking of the good of others. Oh, family is thinking. Hey, let's, uh, let's watch a movie. Everybody agrees, right? What are we going to watch? Let's watch Tarzan. So there are five members in the family. Okay, everybody, let's watch Tarzan. Yeah. Let's, leave, let's leave the house at uh, 4.30 because the movie is uh, at 5. Right? Everybody agree. Everybody is happy. Okay, okay, okay. So you're about to leave. Somebody decided, where are we going to leave at 4.30? We want to watch the, no, the extra. Uh, there's plenty of time, it's only time. And everybody's agitated. You know why? Because the person who decided he'll change everything from 4.30 to 4.50 doesn't take, think about the good of others. Or you go to a restaurant. Let's go to this restaurant. Somebody says, I don't like the food. I mean, everybody already agreed. We'll go to the restaurant. I don't like the food. So it becomes, he soured the whole thing. Okay. Nobody wants to go with me. Let's, I'll, I'll go with you. So, what do you order? Hmm. Everybody is excited. There's this one person who decided he will sour the whole thing. Everybody already ordered. What do you want? I don't like that. You sour the whole thing. And you think you look cute. You're actually selfish. Yesterday, my kids decided they're going to go to this, uh, what do you call it, ramen place? Uh, I know what ramen is, you know. I know what ramen means. Do you know what ramen means? You see, you ate ramen, you don't know what it means. <laughs> so, so, Joel doesn't like ramen. I don't like ramen. They're inviting all of us. But Joel and I, we don't like ramen. You don't need to sour their fun. I said, go, go ahead, go. And you should go. What about, oh, forget about us. We'll just have a good time. So me and Joel, we have a good time. We did not sour the ramen whatever. So they drove for how many minutes to go there? 24. They drove 24 minutes to go there to go by under 24 minutes. I'm just happy. I don't have to drive that long. But I enjoy my time with Joel. We shop twice. We return the product twice. <laughs> I, then, I end up not spending anything on, her, on his gift. You know, because we, oh, but we enjoy ourselves. Meaning, we did not sour their fellowship. They did not sour ours. We just all Enjoy. We don't want to fellowship with us. We want you to fellowship. We don't like to, to, go, to go there. You sour the whole thing. In each family, there is a sour grape. In each church, I'm not talking about you guys, okay? I mean, okay, I'm going to look at the floor. In each church, <laughs> there are also members who are sour grapes. Everybody is already enjoying, and you want to sour the party. But the problem is this, the moment you have one sour grape, it sours the whole thing. You know, so the, uh, my, my father sometimes would say, come on, let's just enjoy, let's, let, let, let's just enjoy, you know, let, let's just enjoy. Don't sour the whole thing. You know, so, sometimes parents are, are, are like that. Hey, let's enjoy, let's eat. I could be paying credit cards with this. Come on. Don't, don't sour the whole thing, just enjoy. I could this money we spend in the restaurant, I could, prep, I, I could buy one week of grocery. So they are eating one week of grocery. <laughs> <laughs> you sour the whole thing. You know, people wa- wa- just want to go out, enjoy. And none of you are guilty here. I'm just telling a story, you know. But I think uh, from, from your reaction, you know what I mean? A guilty one can affect the whole bunch. 
No, when, when Joseph came to me and says, Papa, I'm going to change course and we talk and he's going to continue engineering. At the end of it, I told Joseph, jo Joseph, you know you've got, I'm giving you five years, right? After we talk about it, I said, Joseph, you know you've got only got five years in engineering, right? Yes, Papa. I said, you know why five years, Joseph, right? Because I said, you have siblings. And they have to go to college too. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I gave you the choice, what course, you chose the course. You know, it's only five years, right? And you go beyond five years, you're gonna have to borrow money on your own. I'm not even gonna call sign, I told him. Because you got, you've got five years, you know that, right? Why, because I cannot sour the whole family. Can you imagine some foolish decisions that family makes? One of the children decided they'll do whatever they want. Instead of studying for four years in college, he studied for 40 years, and he's got other siblings. The other siblings suffer. Don't do that. Don't do that. You've got to think of what is good for the others. This is extremely difficult to learn and apply. Because of sinful nature, man is naturally selfish. Everybody should and can agree on something. Whatever you do, look at this. Do it as unto the Lord. Now let's go back now to verse 24. Seek the good of others. We are all in the same body, right? Part of each other. Whose body are we? Body of Christ, right? Okay, let me, let me go back. Let, let's let's, let's say, say it again. We are part of one body, right? Okay. Whose body is it? Body of Christ. So now, if I hurt her, I am not thinking of her good. Right? If I hurt her, I'm not thinking of her good. I become selfish. But if I hurt her, what is she a part of? Body of Christ. Whose body? So if I hurt her, whom do I hurt? Go back to verse 24. Think of what is good for the others. You know who's the other? Jesus Christ. Part of the reason why we do the selfish thing, we don't think of what is good for Jesus. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it as unto your brother. Did I say that? Do it as unto the Lord. How we treat each other, how we deal with each other, whether we are faithful to each other, we are loyal to each other, we do the right thing to each other, it's unto the Lord. What you do to these little ones, you do it unto me. This is what the Corinthians did not get. Why? There was incest in the church. They say, I'll be nice. He's my friend. He's my relative. But he is part of the body. There is adultery in the body. You are not thinking about Jesus. You know why? You know the most, who is the most difficult person to give gift to? person who has everything. Most difficult person to give gifts to. The person who has everything. Because the person has everything and it's very difficult to give a gift to him, what do we end up doing? Not giving anything. Who is the most neglected person during Christmas? Jesus. He has everything. Therefore, we don't even think about him. When in fact, look, listen to this. If you come across people whom you think has everything, number one, it turns out they don't have everything. If you think about it, give them the simplest thing, they are very happy. You know, for example, Brother Willie, Dalhin mo lang sa ulo-ulo yan. Maraming sili. Maligayang maligayang yan. Yeah. You give him durian. He's besides himself. Yeah. 
I keep telling him, amoy utot, bakit yun gusto mo? <laughs> yeah. But uh, actually, it's not, it's not, it's not hard to please him if you come, to, you, you know when we're together in the Philippines, when we eat, he, he will, even when, when we're elsewhere, when we have company, where do you want to eat? They, they choose, they choose the best restaurants because they don't pay. But brother Will and I will look at each other and we will, we will have a look. You know why? For example, when we're in Hong Kong, gusto namin kumain, so tabi-tabi lang, ilugaw-lugaw eh. That, that makes us very happy. And then we will go there and say, I, I will tell Brother Willie, why did you bring us last night to this restaurant? This Lugo is better. I know, he said, I know. I know why they want to, to, to be there. Because you are doing your best to impress another person. You know? But actually, the simplest thing, you know what, Jesus, you, you, you want to make Jesus happy? Well, he just wants us to love him, to live in his presence, to do the right thing makes him happy. And the right thing is doing the right thing for the body. That makes him happy. And when we do that, that is when the Bible says he will not withdraw his loving kindness and faithfulness to us. When we seek the good of each other, we are seeking the good of Jesus. When we do harm to each other, we are harming Jesus. Remember the parable. What you do to one of these little ones you do it unto me. Ken Copeland was saying this. He said he was, uh, when, when he was newly married with Gloria, he said, she was always a very angry person. She said, I'm, a, I'm a very angry. She said, I'm screaming at my kids. I'm screaming at my wife. Because that's the life that Ken Copeland has before. Then he said one day, she was, he was screaming at the top of his lungs uh, against Gloria. And the Lord spoke to him and said, Ken, why are you screaming at Gloria? And said, why, Lord? And, and uh, the Lord spoke to, uh, to Kenneth Copeland and says, you know who Gloria is? She's my daughter. Why are you screaming at her? And then Kenneth Copeland says, he began to realize, I'm screaming at God. And said, from then on, he stopped. Because what we do to each other, we do it as a the Lord. But why is it that we don't think that way? Because of our immaturity, and because of our selfishness. Have you ever brought your family to a place and one of the family members is a sour grape and the parent says, Niti ka naman. And everybody, hey! Because that person is not thinking of the good of the family. If you're thinking of the good of the family, you, you will smile. It will humiliate your parents, it will humiliate your other siblings, and this is what Paul is trying. When you do something that violates the body, you hurt the whole body. Okay, everything is going back. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Yeah, you can, you can do everything. Yeah, you can. You can. Look, I, 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 teach, I teach in the Philippines, we are forbidden from, from drunkenness. But they didn't say you can't drink. I know those pastors will tell you that they see me order beer or drink. It's not beneficial. It's not beneficial. Why will I do something that will hurt them? Now I can teach them because I want to free their conscience, but they won't see me. Why? Because they'll offend them. You know. I have a few times here in Chicago, I'll be, one time for the real estate, for the financing of this church before, I have, I have a member of the church accompanying me, and we are in a restaurant, and, and, and he told me this, he said, you know, you know, Pastor said, I would really like to order a beer. Really to offend I said, no, no order some beer. And he looked at me while he was drinking the beer. Is it really okay? I said, I know it's okay. He was drinking his beer. Is it, is it, I said, I'm telling you, it's okay. It doesn't offend me because he's not getting drunk. But will I do it in front, of, in, in front of him? No. Because it may offend him. But I have nothing against it. You, see, you think of what is beneficial to others. That's why even in parenting, you think of what is beneficial for everybody, for your kids. I'm, I'm telling my wife, we have been back to work several times, but the only work she, she gets, she still does something to make, to make some money, is the one that will not disturb what she's doing in the family. Why? It will not be beneficial. You see? 
That's why it, it, I know that it's very famous now. I need my time. I don't have my time. Yeah, I have my time. Anne doesn't have her time. Her time is mine. My time is hers. Do we get tired? Yes. And the amazing thing is, for example, if my, my wife says that I'm, I'm being stressed out, she will tell me, well, sweetheart, I think you really need to get out. You need to, to do. That's, by the way, that's one of the reasons why I'm going to Israel this coming June and study and be there for five weeks. Um, my wife is the one who, who sees, sweetheart. You see, she has been saving money for that for the longest time. Was it hard for her to save money? Yes. But she was thinking of what is beneficial for me. Now I look at her and, 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 I, and I said, ah, and this is too much. But I do it also. Why? That will be beneficial for her also. Because she looked at me and says, Lagi mo nalak mo ina away. You know? Sometimes she will look at me and say, Wag mo, wag mo nadalhin yung problema mo sa bahay. It will also be, be beneficial in my estimate to the body. Because then I will be taught more and I'll be, be able to, to teach better. You see, you do things as unto the Lord. Now listen. That's why our children, our parents, our siblings are doing what they're doing. They're not thinking this way. You know why? Immaturity. Can you imagine the moment we think this way before we say something? What will it do to the Lord? You don't ask anymore, what will it do to her? What will it do to the Lord? Now, now can you imagine this? You are dating, right? And you tell the lady, you don't love me if you don't sleep with me. Why don't you think of it this way? What will it do to Jesus? Or you're a girl, you tell the boy, why don't you sleep with me? What will it do to Jesus? We don't think that way. Because we're very selfish. We don't think that way. That's why when Paul wrote this, he wrote this to an immature church. It, this is what we say to each other on the dinner table when we are angry with our kids. Don't just think about yourself. Don't just think about yourself, girl. Don't just think about yourself, son. That's what we say. Because we make all these foolish decisions because we don't think of others. Look, you have, if you, if you know some kids, they don't care if they finish school in 25 years. But they have brothers and sisters. Hey, think about them. Think about them. They need to go to school too. Some, 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 some siblings, for as long as they're okay, it doesn't matter if the other siblings are not okay. No, everybody's going to be okay. You think of what is good for others. You know. The moment we start thinking that way in terms of the body of Christ, our, our attitude will change. Yeah. That's why when I was told, he stopped stop doing missions, I, I tell our leader, I, I gave my word to the Filipinos in the Philippines. I have to think of what is good for, yeah, but our finance can't take it. I know, but we have to learn how to juggle now. Because we, only, we don't only think of what is good for us, we think of what is good for others. Why? Because what we do to them, we do unto Jesus. Huh? Amen. So we went to this uh, prison house in, in uh, was, it, was it Benguet, Kathy? Oh, yeah, yeah, Benguet. And, you know, the, the warden is very jolly. He's, he's, he's a Christian, I guess. And, and the prisoners are being witnessed. Do you look at the chart? Uh, these are life imprisonment allowed them. You'll see the charges, uh, rape, uh, murder. That's what you, you read in the chart. And they're being taught the word of God on a regular basis. This church is involved. And, 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 and finally... We ask, uh, what can we do for this, for this, uh, for this thing? And I said, well, you know, Christmas is about to come. Uh, donate na lang kayo. Uh, isang baboy. Kung gusto niyo, baka. Ay, umatas na ako, mahal ng baka. Ba baboy. <laughs> well, because I have to think of what is good for this body also, di ba? So, baboy na. <laughs> so, so uh, okay, we'll, we'll talk to the pastor, pastor, uh, the pastor in Trinidad. 
So when, when, when he went to our Baguio conference, I said, so what's the decision? How, how much is a pig? So, 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 so he gave the amount. And so when I gave the money, he said, so what, what will I put a lion's heart? I said, why lion's heart? We're not here. I said, look, we're partners. Put your name. Put your church. Because you go there every week. We're not there. I don't, what's the use of putting? Lion's heart gave the pig. They don't see us. But if their church gave the pig, the prisoners are happy, welcome them more. It benefits them. It's good for them. That's how we do things. I have no picture there. There's no picture of your pastor on the pig. They may hate it even more, you know. But now it's, it's the pastor who gave it. No, no, it's, it's yours. It's, kayo nang galing. Sa inyo galing. We, we, our church provided the money. It's beneficial for them. It's beneficial for the person. That's what, yung iba, hindi makasugod pag wala yung pangalan nila. Be sure thinking about what is good for yourself. Stop thinking that way. Stop thinking that way. You know, when, when we help, you know when we help others in, in, the, in the Philippines, some, some pastors, and, the, and oh, who, 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 who did this? The pastor will begin to look at, at me sometimes, and I will volunteer. Oh, their church did this. Well, it's beneficial. But why will you embarrass them? You have to think of what is beneficial for others. The moment we start acting that way, I'm telling you, we will not do some of the things we're doing. We will not say some of the things we're saying. And we'll truly benefit the body of Christ. Then we will move on to 2 Corinthians. We're getting close there. We're in chapter 11 next time. We're, we're moving on the, on the, on the 2 Corinthians, which, because they followed this, then they started moving on uh, to maturity. Okay? So, Jesus demonstrated this, thinking good about for the others. Look at this. Though he is God, he became man. Right? Why? For our good. Though he is rich, he became poor. Why? For our good. Though he is whole, he became sick. Why? For our good. Though he is son, he paid taxes. Why? For the good of the priests. So when this teaching is think for the good of others, this is a point of maturity. And, and a lot of us need to outgrow ourselves. Because really, selfishness is very real in all of us. Nobody exempted. In all of us. Kaya nga mahilig tayong mag, mag, magduduroy, di ba? Turo ang turo. Why is it that pala yung blame natin turo, turo sa iba? Because we want to look good. Even if it means making others look bad. Then you are not thinking about what is beneficial or good for the others. Yeah. You know when, when we were having difficulty, you know I, I said to myself I could not quit. It's not good for Brother Willie. That's one of the things. It's not good for. It's not good for the other people who help me. It's not good for. You were not yet in my life during that time. So I was saying it's not good for them. You know why? The guy was going bankrupt and he was sending me money. Can you imagine? You're going bankrupt and you send somebody money and then you quit. You know how it, how much the, it's not good. That's why I cannot quit. For the life of me, I cannot quit because too many people invested something in my life. If I quit now. It'll discourage them. So even if it's tough, can, can you imagine if I compromise right now, what it will do to my daughter? What it will do to Joseph? What it will do to John? What it will do to my two little boys? I cannot quit now. It's not good for them. So you've got to keep on fighting. You've got to keep on pushing forward because that is what is good for others. Amen?